Hello everyone and welcome to episode 2 of the Melbourne Cups International Show. Today it is May edition, so we're going to be looking at some of the international performances for the Melbourne Cup hopefuls from overseas and analysing them. So we'll get straight on with the market and what uh, has changed. So Circle of Fire stays the favourite um, from April to May. It's at $11. Sulcum, second favourite, $13 out to $15. Tio Royal, who's not going to feature in this video, featured last episode. It's stayed at $15. The map has been 100 to 1 into $15 after winning the Andrew Ramsden. A bit of an overreaction there, in my opinion. Vauban, $13 out to $15. Vauban will feature in this video. Middle Earth, $15 out to $18. Middle Earth will feature in this video. Via Sistina, $15 out to $18. Warmonger, $101 into $18 after an emphatic Queensland Derby win. Without a fight, $13 out to $18. Mark Twain, $18 out to $21. Riff Rocket stays at the $21. Isle of Jura, who's going to feature in this video, $51 into $26. Orchestral stays at $26. Post Impressionist also stays at $26. The Big Drift has been proud of Jenny, $13 out to $26. Royal Champion is at $26. Tower of London will feature in this video $34 into $26. So that's the look at the market from April to May. The first replay we're going to be taking a look at is of the Group 2 Yorkshire Cup at York over about the 2,800 metres or so ran in mid-May featuring three Melbourne Cup hopefuls, Giovalotto, Vauban and also Tower of London. Uh, now, Giovalotto wins this race. This horse is five wins from 15 starts in its career, so it's putting together uh, a nice career. Two starts ago, it ran in the Dubai Gold Cup behind Tower of London. That replay featured in the April edition Melbourne Cup International Show, so if you haven't seen that, go and check it out. But Giovalotto finished three and a half lengths off Tower of London on that occasion, but into this Yorkshire Cup, Giovalotto got a five kilo weight swing on Tower of London, which I think saw the change in results. Tower of London was a good favourite heading into this Yorkshire Cup day and failed. In terms of Vauban, it was its first up run of a 27-week spell off the Melbourne Cup of 2023, so it'll improve with the run. Could potentially get on the same um, level as Giovalotto. Giovalotto and Vauban carried the same weight on this day. Tower of London, a kilo and a half more than those two horses. So in terms of who I want to be following out of that run, Definitely the top two. Giovalotto is $34, the highest price out of the three. That should change quickly off that run. Vauban, got to follow it off that run. To do that first up was pretty good. Tower of London, we'll need to see again. And also for all those wondering how good the Yorkshire Cup is for a form reference, well, it was won in 2021 by Spanish Mission. That horse, I think, ran third in the 2021 Melbourne Cup. And then it was won by Red Kiddo in 2012, one of the only years that he didn't finish second in the Melbourne Cup was 2012, but he started single figures. So the Yorkshire Cup is a solid form reference heading into the Melbourne Cup. This is a nice horse that we're gonna take a look at here. It's $18 currently in the Melbourne Cup markets. Middle Earth, this was its win at Newbury in the Aston Park Stakes at Group 3 level over 2,400 metres around mid-May or so, where it was first up and it Sprinted really well fresh to win. The top two cleared out from the rest. This horse is four wins from seven starts in its career, so it's putting together a progressive, uh, a progressive record. And the Aston Park Stakes in 2022, without a fight, ran third in this race. And well, Middle Earth won. So if you look at that, Middle Earth seems like a really progressive horse. Now in 2022, without a fight, started single figures for the Melbourne Cup and failed. But I think that was due to a wet track. So if Middle Earth comes over and runs in the Melbourne Cup, based off this form line, it should be starting pretty short in the market. Looks like a progressive horse off that win and being first up in that race. It'll only take improvement and I'd love to see what it does up in class. The next replay we're going to be taking a look at is of the listed festival stakes at Goodwood about a week ago. And the horse featuring is the win of Isle of Jura. Now this horse has won four on the trot, including this run. This was only over the 2,000 metres. The highest uh, distance this horse has gotten to in its career is 2,400 metres when it won two starts ago. This was off a little bit of a break, an 11-week break, so it did well to win this festival stakes. is 7 from 12 in its career, trained by George Scott. An interesting fact is this is actually Cascadian's full brother. So Cascadian wouldn't be able to get a Melbourne Cup distance, um, and Isle of Jura 
only has only gotten to a, as far as 2400 meters so far so i will need to see it see it again at a higher grade before i can assess whether it is a genuine melbourne cup chance but it's showing good signs so far the last replay we're going to be taking a look at for today is of a horse that was featured in last episode savannah's night and this was its win in the group two pre vicomtesi bigier at longchamp where it won pretty well and there was a horse that ran in this race that ran in the Dubai Gold Cup behind Tower of London. Now, when you tie the two form lines in based off of this one horse, Savannah's Knight is about two to three lengths clear of Tower of London. And it seems that Giovalotto and Vauban are about two to three lengths clear of Tower of London. So that means that I reckon Savannah's Knight is actually still being overlooked by the market. I think it's still 40 to one currently in the futures markets. Um, still early days, as um, I've already said numerous times in the last episode, but Savannah's Night seems like it's over the odds. It's one, two in a row, group three, group two last start. It's going well. Forgot to mention as well that Savannah's Night race was won by American in 2009. American won the Melbourne Cup in 2010. So if that's saying anything, Savannah's Night, watch it for the 2025 Melbourne Cup. It was actually won in 2020 by San Huberto, who was an import that came over here. It won the Baggett Handicap. I think that was its last ever start, actually. So that's how the form looks at a Savannah's Night race. Now for all the internationals watching living outside Australia, I'll give you my top three seeds for the Melbourne Cup for Australians. As we speak, this is May edition, Salmonator's top three seeds. So they'll appear down the bottom. In number one, I've still got Via Sistina. I reckon this source follows a similar profile to Very Elegant. An import, Chris Waller trains it. Looked progressive in the autumn. Did well behind Pride of Jenny last start. It's got to be in my top three seeds and it's first. Mark Twain in there for second. I was really impressed with this horse's turn of foot in the Roy Higgins, I'm pretty sure. Um, storming home from the back. This horse, um, got to follow it into this spring. It'll be running very well. And in for third, after Saturday's demolition job, Warmonger won by 10 lengths in the Queensland Derby. Now, this is a bit of a weird one because a few people will say, well, it was a, a frantic tempo up front. Warmonger got the race to suit. It was just an out and out stayer. But Incentivize went from a seven length Toowoomba beat, a Toowoomba maiden beat to winning all its races by 10 lengths up there in Queensland. So maybe Warmonger has just turned a corner recently and is doing really well. It's currently at $18. Be Sistina, Mark Twain, uh, Warmonger, my top three seeds in this May edition. Well, thank you everyone for watching this video. Hopefully you learned something and well, make sure to like and subscribe if you haven't already and I'll see you for episode three in a month.